CBS Sports presents Singular at the Half. Sponsored by Singular. Raising the bar. Welcome, everyone, back to our studios here in New York, Singular at the Half. Both our games, Chicago and in Albuquerque, are at halftime. I'm Greg Gumbel, along with Clark Kellogg and Seth Davis. And as we were just saying here, you couldn't get these games any tighter. Let's first talk about the Arizona-Oklahoma State game. Some of you are watching that at halftime. Arizona with a 41-38 to lead. And, Clark, Arizona can't shoot much better than this. They sure can't. Heat pump efficiency from the field, Greg. They've made 70% of their shots, and they've done it because early on they got high-quality looks. Salim Stoudemire off the dribble from deep. And then penetration and pitch, Radinovich. Knocks that one down. Nice inside outside action here. Fry to Radinovich. And then Hassan Adams, who had 10 points, just takes a warm up jump shot there. So Arizona shooting 70%, but only up by three at yeah. halftime. Yeah, exactly. The Cowboys are right there with them. Why? Well, I guess when you're playing a heat pump, you need to turn up the heat defensively. <laughs> and that's what they did. Arizona opened up a 10 point lead. And Oklahoma State started taking higher percentage shots and getting out in transition a little bit and mostly attacking the basket, which is what they do best. You see John John Lucas there with the bank and then the freshman James on Curry to Ivan McFarlane McFarlane attacking the glass Oklahoma State is plus eight on the offensive rebounds and this is what they did for getting out in transition Daniel Bobbick with the finish that capped a 12 to run and enabled Oklahoma State to climb back into this game and also I thought for the Cowboys to go inside to Joey Graham establish him on the block got their heat going a little bit and I think that's transferred on both ends of the Would floor. Would it be fair to say that we haven't seen the real Oklahoma State as much as we've seen the real Arizona? Um, maybe not. I think Oklahoma State has to pick up the defense, which they did to get back in it. But both of these teams have played kind of close to what they typically do in the course of a ball game. All right. We'll take a time out here and then singular at the half. We'll continue in just a moment. Welcome back, everyone, in our other game in Albuquerque. That one at halftime, West Virginia and Texas Tech are tied at 32. After being down for most of the first half, Tech came back to pull into a tie at halftime of this game. Well, uh, Texas Tech did a good job, I think, getting in transition and speeding up the game, and that's really what they do best because West Virginia has really keyed on their guards. Texas Tech answered early with Devon Giles, who scored their first 10 points. I promise you, this was not at the top of the scouting report for West Virginia, but when you put such a defensive key on the guards, Ronald Ross is 3 for 11 from the field, only 6 points, and that's exactly what Bob Knight has been trying to get Giles to do all season long is be active on the glass. He actually leads all scores and all rebounders 10 points and four rebounds. Suffice it to say, if Giles can give the Red Raiders that kind of effort inside, especially on the offensive glass, I think that's going to be a, a huge plus for it. I want to remind our viewers, we will take you to that game as soon as the second half gets underway. Question I have for you is, can West Virginia shoot the three? Yeah, they can. They actually <laughs> shot it extremely well the first part of that half. Actually made six three-point shots in the first ten minutes, pushed out to an eight-point lead, but then went cold the last ten minutes. But Pitts noggle early on. Knocks it down from deep. Then Tyrone Sally does the same thing. Then the coach's son, Patrick Beeline, and then Mike Ganji. Man, it was a barrage of threes again. They made six of their seven three-pointers in that half in the first ten minutes. The defense picked up for Texas Tech. The three-pointers didn't fall, and that's why we're in a tie situation right now. Okay, the seven seed West Virginia, six seed Texas Tech, they're tied at 32. Earlier this evening, pick up the action with Albuquerque, Louisville. Welcome back, everyone. Second half is underway out in Albuquerque. The Mountaineers have grabbed a two-point lead. Let's take you there live. Gus Johnson and Len Elmore. West Virginia led it by eight early in the first half, 22-14. But Texas Tech figured out this West Virginia offense tied the score at 32 at halftime. Right now, Red Raiders at the free throw line trying to tie the score. And Gus, they've also figured out the West Virginia defense, the 1-3-1 and the 2-3 zones. They've been able to get the ball inside the lane, create foul situations, and also score 20 points in the paint. There's Coach John Beeline, the 20th head coach in West Virginia history. His teams, his team rather, has beaten seven ranked teams this year. The winner here will advance to the Elite Eight to take on a Louisville team that knocked off Washington, the first number one seed going down in this year's tournament. Backdoor, Bitsnoggle, and finally, 
Texas Tech gets beat on one of those backdoor plays. And they ran it with the big man, recognizing that Devon Giles, as a big man, not accustomed to coming outside and playing a Kevin Pitznagel, and Pitznagel used him. Baseline, Dora squares up, pops out, loose ball, picked up, J.D. Collins. Pitt Snoggle's been hot, got his man in the air, drew a foul. And that's Giles' third. Well, it's a three-point shooting that got West Virginia there. Early eight-point lead in the first half. And it was all about ball movement and execution on the screens. And the diversity in that offense as different guys able to put the ball in the basket from beyond the arc. And Gus, you just saw once again how Giles has to be very careful. Pitts now, you're playing for the three, he'll go back door. You back off him, he'll hit that three. He's also been successful on the box, posting up. Gansey crosses over. Skip pass, Hair Bear for three. Loose ball tapped up and in. Who is there? Gansey. And boy, Gansey has a knack of slashing in on the weak side and just getting a hand on the ball. And in that one, obviously, it's better to be lucky than good. But it doesn't happen if Gansey doesn't hustle and stay on that offensive glass. Ball kicked out. Dora tracks it down. Gansey with 11 points. Pitsnoggle with 11 for West Virginia. The floater, another air ball. Dora there, though, for the follow. But Ronald Ross just struggling right now. He's getting shots, but he's rushing them. That's why he's not even getting close to the rim. He's 3 of 12 right now in this ball game. Much better shooter. Averaging almost 53% from the field. And of his nine misses, he's probably had about three air balls in this game on running jump shots. And a foul on the baseline. And that's Giles, his fourth. So there's your score, 38-36 West Virginia by two. We'll continue to keep tabs on that, but second half action is about to start up out in Chicago. Arizona leading Oklahoma State by three. Thanks for joining us here on Singular at the Half. We'll send you back to Chicago after this. CBS Sports presents Singular at the Half, sponsored by Singular, raising the bar. And the way to neutralize Giles is to make him play defense, and Pitsnoggle has done that and gotten Giles in foul trouble. Game tied at 32 at halftime. West Virginia up now, 40 to 36. The kick out, Jackson. Dora picks it up off the floor. Jackson, and a foul on the sideline on Collins. Access NCAA March Madness on demand for live video of regional semifinal games outside of your viewing area. Plus, get live team press conferences and archives of all games. It's only at NCAAsports.com or CSTV.com. Collins picks up his third foul for West Virginia. Jackson. To the basket, off the mark again. Ronald Ross and his struggles continue. Three of 13. Hair Bear, the banker. Zeno with the rebound. Zeno cut off. Dora inside, great pass. Hard to handle for Marshall, and he travels. Texas Tech out of sync early in the second half. Arizona leads by three as we get ready for the second half. A look now at our Powerade halftime statistics. Arizona shot 70% in that first half. When they got an open shot, they knocked it down. Oklahoma State staying in it by virtue of their three-point shooting and the fact they've gotten 12 points off of second-chance opportunities. And Hassan Adams with 10 points in that first half, including the late three to put him up. And Salim Stoudemire with a couple of early fouls, uh, the services of their top score lost for about uh, eight minutes of that first half. Well, and Stoudemire showing when he gets an open look, even with a hand in his face, he can and will knock it down. Arizona has played a 1-3-1 zone throughout most of the first half. 
They need to look inside to Channing Fry, get him some opportunities. When Fry has gotten doubled, he has found the open man more often than not. That we look at the official stats, uh, Stoudemire played only 10 of the 20 first half minutes. He's in there now. That's Channing Fry with Radenovich. Shakur. And Shakur takes it to the goal and is fouled. No one in serious trouble. Foul trouble after the first half, except for Terrence Crawford off the Oklahoma State bench. He picked up three fouls in about one minute. That's Ivan McFarland's first. Sending Mustafa Shakur to the line. Likened to Jason Terry, who was part of that 97 Arizona championship team. He's a 73% foul shooter on the year. Out of Philadelphia, Friends Central High School. One of the many McDonald's All-Americas, high school All-Americas that have migrated to Tucson. Misses them both. But Fry, after capturing the ball, throws it right to James on Curry. Tried to get rid of it before he walked. And Mustafa Shakur, usually a good free throw shooter, not even close on those two. Arizona coming out in man to man to start the second half. Stoudemire matched up with John Lucas, James on Curry, and Shakur. Eight on the shot clock. Lucas generates toward the alley and puts up a runner. And the game is tied. No, it goes 41 of 40 to Arizona. The game was tied six times in the first half. And a quick bucket inside by Radenovich, and he has eight. And Eddie Sutton cannot be happy with his transition defense there. Nobody stopped the ball. That was too easy. Fry hustling to save and right into the press table. Oklahoma State really has to continue to look to Joey Graham. He's got a favorable matchup being guarded by Radinovich. Shot six free throws in that first half because he was aggressive in taking the ball to the basket and exploiting that post. Here he is, Radinovich on him. And he banks it off the glass, won't go down. Knocked out of bounds by Oklahoma State. Three-point lead. The Arizona Wildcats in the Pacific 10. Lute Olson, the 26th time in his career he's taken a team to the NCAA tournament, and so has Eddie Sutton, 26 teams into the tournament. Beautiful interior passing, and Radenovich will go to the line. When Arizona has gotten the ball inside to Channing Fry, good things have happened. He has either scored or he's found an open teammate for a layup or an open perimeter shot. The foul on John Lucas, his second. Fry is such a skilled basketball player. He's got very good hands, solid rebounder, block shots, and very intelligent on the floor. Cold at the line. Radenovich averaging eight on the season, looking for his ninth point. Joey Graham out and Terrence Crawford in for Eddie Sutton's Cowboys. I'm not sure Dick can get a more evenly matched free throw battle. Both these teams shoot about 78% on the season, and that one going to be wiped away. Channing Fry in a bit too early. Uh, Radenovich missed anyway. So from the line, uh, Arizona five for ten. Pointed out, these are two of the top free throw shooting teams, you know, the top 10 in the nation. Lucas with a runner. Radenovich bats it in the air. Crawford can't save. He touched it last. As long as they've been coaching Sutton and Olson, this is only the second time they've gone head to head, and uh, Lute Olson has won those two contests. Arizona going with a little 1 4 low set. They're crossing underneath. Bobby on Stoudemire. Stoudemire calling for the ball screen. Nice job. Oh, what a pass by Radenovich into Channing Fry. And it's a five point Wildcat lead. Well, you're not going to find any better passing big man than Channing Fry and Radenovich. Eddie Sutton doesn't like what he sees. He calls an early timeout. Less than three minutes into the second half, and the Cats have clawed to a five-point advantage. 
I don't look at myself as a basketball coach. I look at myself as a leader who happens to coach basketball. When they get out into the workplace, they're armed with not just a jump shot or a dribble. I want you armed for life. You know, I want you to develop as a player. I want you to develop as a student. And I want you to develop as a human being. My life isn't about playing games. That's why my card is American Express. It's true. The owners of 40 million different cars in America all have one thing in common. They love the personal service and competitive rates they get from their State Farm agent. And they wouldn't drive without one. Find out why more drivers trust State Farm for auto insurance than the next three companies combined. Yeah, I'd like to redeem my credit card miles to the finals in St. Louis. He shoots. Nothing but no. Go from no to no hassle with Capital One No Hassle Rewards. Fly any airline with no blackout dates. What's in your wallet? They're right behind me. I see them. Go south. Head for the roof. That way. I sent the package overnight. Should be there by 8.30. Should be there? Trust me, he'll be there. Ugh. Texas Tech really making things happen on the defensive end. Down low, and Beeline banks one home. And the winner of this game will take on Louisville for a trip to the Final Four. Ross inside, Dora kept it up high and drew the foul. So Daryl Dora heads to the line. The foul on the play called on Nichols, his second. And Dora, three of four at the free throw line this evening. Gets the first. Tuesday on the Amazing Race, a car accident puts one team in peril. And hungry lions get too close for comfort. Don't miss a new Amazing Race Tuesday at 9, 8 central on CBS. Texas Tech, a 75% free throw shooting team. And so far in this game, as Coach Knight looks on, the Red Raiders are 9 of 13. That's 69%. And again, Texas Tech staying with the pressure defense, denying the opportunity to go back door. And West Virginia now seems to be confused. Ross off balance shot. Skip pass. And Nichols peels it back. And that was a nice decision by Nichols because it appeared as though West Virginia was going to start speeding up, and that's not to their benefit. They need to back it up and start running their set. Back door, Fisher tried to jam it. No. Contested by Dora. Red Raiders could take the lead right here. Inside, great catch. And cut it. Terrific by Marshall. Curtis Marshall looked like Derek Jeter gobbling up a ground ball. Well, it all began with the block shot and the miss of the dunk. And then the push right here, you get four guys on the strong side with the ball. And only one man, and that's Sally, to try to defend Marshall. An excellent ball movement and attack by Texas Tech. Marshall has the free throw. Red Raiders with the 47-44 lead. Largest lead of the game for Tech. Kansas back in the game now, playing with stomach cramps. And Hair Bear throws it out of bounds. West Virginia tightening up right now. 47-44, Tech with the lead. Now, a lot of people mention the fact that maybe the double overtime game against Wake Forest may have taken some steam out of West Virginia, that they might be a bit tired. Now, I don't necessarily believe that, considering what they're playing for. But they're showing the signs of some mental fatigue as the passes are a little bit off. They're starting to make some mistakes that they normally don't do. 
West Virginia has turned it over 12 times. They average 11 turnovers per game on the season. Ball stolen. Collins lobs it to Gansey in the front court. Has it rejected, but right there for the follow is Frank Young, the sophomore from Tallahassee, who just checked in. Boy, what a big lift Frank Young gave West Virginia during the Big East tournament with Sally sideline with the intestinal illness. Young came off and just hit big three after big three to get them to the Big East final. At 14 against Boston College inside, Dora takes it in. Somehow managed to get that ball over the outstretched arm of Dior Fisher. Three-point lead for the Red Raiders. And Texas Tech still doing it in the paint. Collins to Fisher, double team. He wants it. Knocked away. And Hair Bear picks it up. Fisher, extra pass. Gansey, terrific recognition. He threaded the needle on that one, got it past the defender's hands. But you give Joe Hair Bear all the credit for the hustle and getting a loose ball, getting down on the floor. One point game. And Zeno just can't hold on, took his eyes off of it. 10.35 to go in the second half. We've got a tight one in Albuquerque for a trip to the Elite Eight. Oh, yeah. He'll take over for his dad next year. And Lucas scores from 10. John Lucas now with 13 to lead the Cowboys. Arizona calling a set. A little stagger in the post up back. Yeah. James on Curry anticipated behind the back to the Carlin, and he is fouled. They're going to take a timeout. Six minutes into this second half, Arizona by five. Oklahoma State, the Wildcats continue to lead the Cowboys. Stoudemire feeding Hassan Adams here for two of his 12 points, 49-44. 1354 remaining in the second half in Chicago. Let's send you back to Gus and Lynn. We've had 10 ties and 13 lead changes in this game. Texas Tech leads West Virginia by one. Texas Tech has been able to get back in the lead using the inside game. Doing a terrific job of getting it in the paint and extending their defense and contesting the threes. But when you got guys like Patrick Beeline who can shoot it in critical situations. You can't count the Mountaineers out. Ross on the hop. It's kicked. And the shot clock resets to 35. West Virginia with eight threes on 18 attempts. Only one three-point field goal made for Texas Tech. So West Virginia has really ridden the three-pointers. And you look at the shooting percentages starting to even out now as Texas Tech is finding the range. All knocked out of bounds. Marshall almost coming up with a steal. West Virginia re reclaiming the lead, 51-49. I talked about Patrick Beeline, 10 points and four assists on the day. And West Virginia's needed every one of those 10 points. As Beeline has provided another scoring threat from the perimeter. Yanzi, Pitznagel's been great. It out of the air. Nice job defensively enforcing Pitts Nozzle away from the basket so that one hander isn't nearly as accurate. Inside. And once again, an ill advised pass by Ronald Ross. Ross having one. Is such a hard worker. I've not seen a harder worker in college basketball this year. to Rogers as he returns. Fry up on top. Inside feed. And another assist from Fry. They go high low again. And Hassan Adams with 14 to lead the Cats. The last time that Channy Fry tried to make a post feed, he passed it to the postman's wrong hand. That time to the right hand. And led it to a, led Hassan Adams to an easy hoop. James on Curry able to spot up and nail the three. He has eight. A little bit of a defensive switch. Lute Olsen going back to the matchup zone and couldn't get out to the shooter. Oh. 
Rogers from three point range. Rebound and a good one it is by the freshman McClellan taken away. And Curry had a handful of McClellan's jersey on that rebound. Chance to tie or take the lead with a three for Oklahoma State. They've led on only rare occasions. Double high pick. Graham left alone from eight. Short arm that one almost tapped in by Fry as he and McFarland were up fighting for the loose ball. Graham looked almost surprised he was that wide open. He's a very good mid-range shooter, but shot that one almost as an afterthought. Two-point game, Arizona on top, 12 and a half to go. Stephen Graham into the game, number 21. And from the corner, it's Joey Graham with a trade, and it's 52-51 Oklahoma State. can hit him from out there and has all season. Shakur, he's easy to find. The only man on the court with blue shoes. Inside to Fry. Jump hook out there. McClellan up high fighting for the offensive board. They're going to call that on Fry. It'll be his third. Senior Joey Graham from Brandon, Florida, from outside the line, gives the Cowboys the lead. New York, we'll get you back to your game in a moment after we check into what's happening in Chicago. Near side of the court, Joey Graham gets the ball from brother Steven. The three-pointer, three of his 14, gives Oklahoma State their first lead since very early on in the first half, 52-51. Back to Albuquerque, Gus and Lenz. and the Red Raiders are getting ready. West Virginia playing some hard basketball led by as many as eight in the first half. Six of nine from the three-point line to start the game, but the Red Raiders figured it out, and it's been a close battle ever since. And Texas Tech defensively has taken away the back door of some West Virginia contested the three-pointers. And both teams really trying to score in the paint. Basket will not count. Foul on the floor. But Pitsnoggle has been terrific. Ganzi was really good early. He has stomach cramps right now. And Beeline has had the eye from downtown. Well, you look at the percentages those guys are shooting. And as a whole, here in the second half, West Virginia 60% from the field, Texas Tech 57%. And that's directly attributable to their desire to get the ball inside. He line bounces it, pits Noggle on the roll, hanging in the air. Gets his own rebound. Look at the big foul. And he's called for an offensive foul. That's a terrific call. He did lean in. But Pitsnoggle is working awfully hard. Look how active he is. After the first shot, watch him go right to the rim to get the rebound. And that's absolutely an offensive foul. As he dipped the shoulder, made strong contact. But you can't fault Kevin Pitsnoggle for the hustle. Pitsnoggle only a junior. In the corner. That one off the mark for Marshall. Loose ball tapped around. Beeline with the rebound. Mountaineers can go up right here. Gus, I just love it. You watch these guys go after loose balls, the facial expressions. You know, there's obviously a sense of urgency here with both teams. Nobody's taking anything for granted. Beeline from deep. Rims off. Rebounded by Young. And a foul. Frank Young, the sophomore from Tallahassee. His coaches say that he has great presence. He's just waiting for his turn right now. Will start the next two years when Tyrone Sally leaves. And that's the kind of player Coach John Beeline wants. He doesn't want the pampered AAU superstar. He wants a kid that can come in here that doesn't have to have all the talent, but is coachable and wants to work in the system. Well, obviously, if you're committed to win, John Beeline is one of those coaches that you can come in here and play for. But commitment to winning means also you put your ego aside and you go in here and work and work together. Same kind of team at Texas Tech.
Fitznagel step back jumper. Oh! The big fella at 6'11 has been knocking down threes, posting up and doing a little bit of everything. 40% from beyond the arc is what he's done on the season. If you haven't seen him, better recognize him now. Ball thrown away. Dora dives. Did he get a timeout? No, he didn't. Again, Kevin Fitznagel, 6'11", with that ability to shoot the three, probably more effective from beyond the arc than he is on the block. And if you're Daryl Dora, you cannot leave the chance. Fitznagel getting any daylight beyond that arc. And at the beginning of the year, Fitznagel wasn't even a starter. No, this all changed for West Virginia and Kevin Fitznagel on February 5th when he was inserted as a starter against the Pittsburgh Panthers. Dior Fisher was ill. Pitsnoggle comes in, scores a career-high 27 points, and West Virginia began rolling from that point on. I think they went 11-2 and two from that date. And John Beeline wonders, you know, why didn't I discover that earlier? Dior Fisher had an upper respiratory infection. Inside ball strip, picked up Jackson, three on one. Jackson straight to the hole and lays it up and in. So the story of Kevin Fitznagel and Dior Fisher, kind of a Wally Pip type story. Wally Pip and Lou Gehrig. Lou Gehrig replaces Wally Pip and goes on and sets that consecutive game record, only broken by Cal Ripken a few years ago. Fitznagel, the only native West Virginian on this roster, grew up rooting and dreaming about playing for the Mountaineers. One point lead in the corner, Beeline. Oh, Sally's there for the foul. And that's what you get from West Virginia, team effort. Every possession is somebody different that's making a play. And a steal. No, Sally couldn't hold on. Jackson crosses over. Diving on the floor, gets it, timeout called. Three-point lead, West Virginia, 4.43 to go. Back in the Chicago region with our tournament summary, Illinois' second Elite Eight in the last five years. Interestingly, they played Arizona in 2001 for the right for the Final Four in Louisville. And Rick Pitino, he uh, moves his team on to the Elite Eight, first time for Pitino's Louisville Cardinals. Hassan Adams has 17 points in this game, guarding Daniel Bobek. Now he's got three threes. He had only nine on the season coming into this game. Joey Graham making his move inside, picked up by Fry. Here's Crawford. Spins away from Fry and hoping to draw that fourth foul on the big center of Arizona. Probably forced that one. That wasn't there. Channing Fry. Laying off of Crawford. Crawford trying to take up that space and get to the basket. Okay. Ten on the shot clock. Into the post to Graham. Rodinovich. Oh, look at the block by Adam. <laughs> he plays so big for a man 6'4". He really does. He's long. He's athletic. Look at this. I mean, that is a high riser. Only three seconds now on the shot clock. Oklahoma State has to get it in and get it up quickly. A second gone there, two seconds left in the shot clock. It's almost a catch and shoot now. And Lucas does just that. Violation of the shot clock. Good defense for Arizona, and that has the Wildcat fans cheering. I don't think any coach likes to hear that buzzer. Maybe that's as annoying as anything that can happen to the man on the bench. Well, they actually got a look at it, but Hassan Adams erased it for the second time in one possession. Good luck to feed inside, and it's Adams again in traffic. Finds a second chance and a three-point Arizona lead with 19 coming from Adams. Boy, this is the Hassan Adams that... Lute Olsen wants to see an outstanding offensive rebounder, and it's going to go the other way. An offensive foul on Oklahoma State. This may 
be here when CBS presents the electrifying story of a young man's rise to fame. Singer, sex symbol, king of rock and roll, Elvis is coming this May to CBS. Bry trying to set up Hassan Adams on the back line. Bry's got to get that up to the rim. Adams can hold off his man, and he can get up and above the rim quickly. He can't throw that down at eye level. That's got to be high. Crawford and Curry are out for Oklahoma State. Stephen Graham returns. Bry, he can face up and shoot. You can play pick and pop with that guy all day long. At the other end, it's Stephen Graham, his first points of the game. One of the few times that Oklahoma State has been able to get out in transition in this second half. They'd have, they've had to go against the half-court defense of Arizona for most of this second half as Graham picks up the foul. Joey Graham. No, it's Stephen. He gets his first. It's a tough entry pass, isn't it, Jay? From that far away and trying to sidearm a low bounding pass into the post. Yeah, a little bit too long. They did pick up the foul, but that is a difficult pass to be able to complete. Bry. Six fouls on Oklahoma State now. Three, Arizona. So the next foul will send the Wildcats to the line. Rogers fouled was inside the line. He'll go to the line for two. Third foul on John Lucas. 7.57 left in the second half. Arizona's Hassan Adams, tenacious on the offensive boards, part of a 10-4 Wildcats run as Arizona up 61-58, just under eight minutes to play in the second half. Back to Albuquerque, Gus and Len. 60-55, West Virginia with the lead. John Beeline, years ago, almost 30 years ago, he would go and attend basketball clinics hosted by Coach Bob Knight. Learned a lot from him, and now he's trying to use some of that knowledge against him. And take a look at the games tomorrow. Terrific Michigan State and Duke. That one should be played above the rim. MC State, Wisconsin. It's all here on CBS. Pitsnoggle, seven points in the first half, 13 in the second half. West Virginia up 62-55. Zeno. And a foul. And that will send the Red Raiders to the free throw line to shoot one and one. That's the kind of defensive stand you want if you're John Beeline. You're in a double team. You want to contain. You don't want to foul. You know, you talk about the turnovers by Texas Tech in the last couple of minutes. That's what you try to force, but you do it without foul. J.D. Collins, the junior from Houston, Texas, the point guard for West Virginia, picks up the foul as Dora misses the free throw. It's going to be about execution down the stretch here, particularly for Texas Tech. Can't give away free opportunities, and you got to create some opportunities off your defense. Pitts Noggle pull up, partially blocked. Into the hands of Jackson. That's one way to do it. Jackson hard down the lane. And the foul. Darius Jackson. And this is a time when Texas Tech has to use their athleticism. It started with the block, and then Jackson flying down the lane does a nice job, again, fending off the defender, moving away from the basket to avoid the charge, and picks up the block. Pitsnoggle picked up his second foul. Jackson adds the free throw. 62-58, 3.21 to go second half. An eternity remaining in this one. There's a lot on the line. A trip to the Elite Eight to play Louisville for a trip to St. Louis in the Final Four. Beeline. Almost traveled. 10 to shoot, Hair Bear, 8 to shoot, Sally, Beeline, 4 to shoot, in the corner, Hair Bear, and Air Ball, and that's a shot clock violation. Let's check the CBS Sportline 
the CBS Sports Line stat of the game, three-point shooting. Get complete game stats at cbssportsline.com. 2.42 to go. And when you want to close deficits, particularly in the crunch time, it's all about defense. Probably the best defensive stance Texas Tech has made all game. Jackson picks it up, gets it to Ronald Ross. Ross down the lane, the double clutch off ballot shot. No, who wants it? Fisher just takes it away. Boy, uh, and a Ross. steal. Jackson getting hold on. Out of bounds. We'll stay right here. Whoa. Darius Jackson came out of nowhere. I was just about to say, Ronald Ross definitely wants that shot back. Wasn't a good one, but he was bailed out by his backcourt partner, Darius Jackson, who just snuck in there. And again, we are seeing determination and a sense of urgency on both ends of the floor. Jackson picks up the dribble. Dora, Zeno, Ross, and Giles. And traveling. 62-58, West Virginia with the lead. 2-0-3 remaining. Bob Knight trying to get to the Elite Eight. Louisville waits for the winner of this game. John Beeline and the West Virginia Mountaineers have had a terrific run since the Big East Tournament, and they continue to play great basketball. They're two minutes away from the Elite Eight and the Louisville Cardinals. And as we look at West Virginia, spread their offense, trying to take time off the clock. We've got two overachieving teams. Nobody on that floor highly recruited. But you're right, Gus. We are seeing great basketball. It's because of the players' commitment to the coach's philosophy. And we got two great coaches here tonight. Hair Bear dumped it to Fisher. Beeline looking to get free. Four to shoot. Fisher's got to hurry. Bobbles it. Blocked another shot clock violation. That's back-to-back -back shot clock violations against West Virginia. So with 1.27 to go, Texas Tech with the ball. And you can tell the pressure mounting. Neither team able to really get off any type of offensive execution in their last two possessions. Zeno, the freshman, inside. Bank home. And that's Giles to cut it to two. And that's where Texas Tech has been effective all evening in the paint. How about this? Closing in on a minute. West Virginia throws it away. Jackson to the bucket. Rejected by Sally. Oh, what a play by the senior Tyrone Sally. You talk about bailing out your teammates. Tyrone Sally probably makes the biggest play of his senior career. And again, a terrific block. And he just really saves two points there and keeps his team in the lead. Last chance to dance for Texas Tech and West Virginia. Mountaineers holding on to a two-point lead. 30 seconds on the shot clock. Ronald Ross, the inbounder. Zeno, the freshman. Ross, Jackson gets down the lane, no, tipped up, no, tipped again, no, Jackson trots it down, Dora, pump fake, oh no, a loose ball knocked out of bounds, and we'll head the other way, oh my goodness, Dora's at the basket for Texas Tech, 30 seconds to go, West Virginia by two. Play Graham back for the Cowboys. This game continues to seesaw, and it's Celine Stoudemire, a brilliant free throw shooter, with a chance to tie it up at 66 64 currently. Oklahoma State in front. Stoudemire has missed only nine. Make that 11 free throws. In a thrilling two-point game here in Albuquerque, Patrick Beeline able to call a timeout. Texas Tech thought he was out of bounds. Look at that left foot right there. It slides a little bit. And John Clockety, the official, not really in a good enough position to see definitively whether or not Beeline's foot was out, makes the call anyway. And obviously, Coach Knight disagrees. Huge timeout. Virginia. The 
gives them what could be the final possession, forces Texas Tech for one steal and then having to foul. Well, Texas Tech caught a similar break in the second round against Gonzaga when they were able to get the same kind of timeout called at the end of the game. Well, right now, again, they're going to have to make one attempt at a steal, and then they're going to have to foul And West Virginia. Pretty good free throw shooting team. Pitts Noggle. They're going to have to foul. Zeno lets Collins get by. Time running out. 20 seconds. They should have fouled in the backcourt. And finally, a foul with 17.6 seconds to go. That's 13 seconds that pass. You could have traded possessions. I figure you try for one steal, but then you've got to go and put them on the line and start trading possessions. So Giles fouls out of the game. Fitznagle is four of six from the line. This evening, he has 20 points, eight rebounds. <laughs> A curious decision by Coach Knight not having his team foul early. And the odd part about this West Virginia team is the two big men are the best free throw shooters on the floor. Pitts Noggle at 87% and Dior Fisher who's on the bench right now at 86%. So a timeout called. We'll reset it for you. Texas Tech called that last time out. They have three. Mark here in the Chicago region. Elite eight action. Arizona over the ball. Trailing Oklahoma State by one. Good play by Joey Graham to knock it free from Shakur. And it's brother Stephen Graham at the other line. And to score and he'll go to the line. A weak offensive possession for Arizona. Shakur losing it. And weak defensively by Radinovich. Not jumping in front of Graham with the intent of stopping him and allowing him to finish what could be a three-point play if he can knock down this free throw. Third foul on Radinovich of Arizona. Graham looks for his fifth point and has it. And this is the biggest lead of the game for Oklahoma State for Arizona in the middle of the first half enjoyed a 10-point advantage. If Arizona wants this game coming down the stretch, they have got to play stronger. Strong move by Stoudemire, who takes it in with the big boys and scores. He has 11. And the answer by the freshman, James on Curry. They call him Bubble. Junior from Martinburg, West Virginia. Grew up a Mountaineers fan. Dreamed about playing for West Virginia. Has a chance to give his team a bigger lead. Hits the first. 63-60. Pitsnagel with a terrific evening. 21 points. Well, right now it's a one possession game. Pitsnagel makes this. It's a two possession game within 17.6 seconds. 64-60. Here comes Zeno. Ross, they've got to hurry. I can't believe they didn't go for the quick two. Challenge West Virginia. Fisher with the rebound. With 4.4 seconds to go. Wow. Texas Tech with a meltdown in the last 30 seconds of the game. And see, Gus, you go for the quick two because West Virginia will not foul you and stop the clock and allow you to make points. The Chevrolet most valuable players of the game. Pitsnoggle and Ross. Pitsnoggle 22 points, Ross 16. And Ronald Ross is in jeopardy of losing his first game here in Albuquerque on this floor after going 8 0 in high school. Fisher gets the first one to go. The best finish. For a West Virginia team back in 1959 when they advanced to the championship game. They've got a chance to get back. West Virginia knocks off Texas Tech 65-60 and heads to the Elite Eight. Here's Greg Gumbel in New York. All right, Gus, thank you. So West Virginia moves on.
65-60 is the final score, and as Gus just mentioned to you, West Virginia's first regional final since 1959, the year they went to the finals with Jerry West. Oklahoma State's lead over Arizona is 72-70, just under four minutes to play in Chicago. Dick Enberg and Jay Billis. Well, how about that? All the way back to the days of the kid from Cabin Creek, Zeke Jury. The final eight. So Louisville and West Virginia in the Albuquerque bracket. In the Elite Eight here, Illinois has won the number one seed. Number one team ranked in the nation most of the entire collegiate year. And will they play Oklahoma State or Arizona? Arizona led by as much as 10 in the first half. Three point lead at the intermission for the Wildcats. Oklahoma State caught them at 52 51, eight minutes into the second half. It's been Trading leads back and forth, but Oklahoma State finally opened a four point advantage, its biggest, and now that stands at 72 70, just under four minutes to go. Dick Enberg with Jay Billis and Joey Graven, who's had two tough games in the tournament prior to this one, has starred tonight. 22 points for Graham. 22 points tonight, only 15 points in the first two games. He's been knocking down three point shots, getting to the free throw line, which is a great measure of his aggressiveness. And Joey Graham, Arizona has not had an answer for him. He's been guarded by Ivan Radenovich, and Radenovich has not been able to stop him. Can't stay in front of him. James on Curry, the freshman, has contributed well as uh, well. And Joey Graham gets position, uses that left hand, and he has 24 points. Lucas and McFarland with 13 shipping in. Adams 19 tops for Arizona. This is Channing Fry off the glass. Well, he is so good off of ball screens. He's got great hands. He can play pick and pop or he can roll to the hole. And using the glass very effectively. Oklahoma State's defense has been really strong over the last three or four minutes. The pressure of these final three minutes plus and James on Curry not bashful about taking a long bomb and it's rebounded by Hassan Adams, who has starred tonight for Arizona. Shakur, point guard, runs the show. Will they try to set up Stoudemire for a three? No, they go inside, and they're waiting for it with McFarland with a steal ahead to Lucas. Shakur to beat. Shakur with a block. McFarland draws the foul on Fry, and that'll be four on the 6'11 center of Arizona, who holds his knee in some pain. I think they just got goaltending on that without the foul. You All right, wave the, off the foul. The quick run out and the great play by Shakur, but this was all set up by the turnover by Shakur, trying to throw a straight line pass from outside the top of the key all the way down to Hassan Adams underneath. Uh, you have to expect that that kind of pass is going to be deflected. That is way too long to be able to complete that. After a slow start, McFarland, who had 31 in the Southern Illinois win, now 15 points. As Fry off the glass, not there, and Graham has the rebound. Joey Graham taking over the game in the second half for Oklahoma State. For the point, Cowboy lead. Oklahoma State going against Arizona's man. They're going to run a play. Lucas. Cut off at the pass, double team. Has to clear it out to McFarland. Again on the shot clock. And Lucas pulls up. Adams with another rebound. An empty possession for Oklahoma State. They never really got into anything. Fouls could be critical here. The next foul committed by Oklahoma State will be double bonus time for Arizona. Stoudemire, left-handed, moving right, floating in the air, nails the three, and it's a one-point game. Stoudemire was 17. But why is Oklahoma State gambling on Stoudemire? Gambling for a, a steal when he can burn you with a three like it's a layup. The best three-throw shooter, the best three-point shooter in the nation at over 51% for the entire year, Salim Stoudemire minute and a half to go. Ten on the shot clock. McFarland gets it to the freshman James on Curry. Ooh, very nearly threw that one out of bounds. Blocked inside and Shannon Fry reaches down at that knee once again. Another empty possession for Oklahoma State and again they didn't get into anything offensively. Give credit to Arizona's defense. It's Fry at the 
one minute mark and Arizona claims the lead 77 76 13 points for Fry. And timeout called by Eddie Sutton on the Oklahoma State bench. Stoudemire, after the defensive gamble, takes the screen from Channing Fry and Fry. Outstanding on pick and pop situations all night. Arizona with the lead. The gentleman from Tucson, Lou Olson, in his 45th year of coaching, 22 years in Tucson, and a critical statistic now is the foul situation only four team fouls for Arizona nine for Oklahoma State those 14 fouls means that Arizona has got two fouls to give they do not want to give any open looks to Oklahoma State if they get into a situation where they need to burn a foul in order to keep Oklahoma State from scoring they can do that Meanwhile, any foul committed by the Cowboys sends Arizona to the line in the double bonus. Sotomayor working on Lucas defensively. Down to 40 seconds. Arizona could be aggressive without worrying about fouling. Graham. And there is one of those fouls. A push that will just mean that Oklahoma State will get the ball out of bounds with a new shot clock. And it's almost exactly equal with the game clock. Let's check the CBS Sports Line stat of the game. And field goal percentage a brilliant almost two out of three hits for the Wildcats Oklahoma State one of the best shooting teams in the nation not bad but under their season average by about five percentage points get complete NCAA tournament coverage at CBS Sportline.com. one point game Oklahoma State down to 26 25 24 it's Graham their leading score working on Radenovich still a foul to give no whistle and the basket is good Joey Graham trickles it in his 26th point of the game and also wants a timeout and with 13.1 seconds Arizona timeout will set up what Olsen hopes will be a design for a winning shot Joey Graham who had only 15 points in two games of this tournament and five re rebounds 26 tonight here's your situation still fouls to give but Arizona can't be concerned about that a foul by Oklahoma State though would give the Wildcats a couple of free throws they have not shot well from the charity line or would be in the lead instead they're down by one 13 seconds to go and you gotta think they're gonna try to go to Stoudemire here they've been very successful on pick and roll situations Stoudemire almost fumbled the ball into the backboard and here it comes pick and roll with Fry. he pulls up and oh! hit with 2.8 seconds a clutch jumper from Salim Stoudemire, the All-America Wildcat guard. Oh, my! Oklahoma State unable to stop the pick and roll all night long. And Lute also getting into his team right now, letting him know the game is not over. But Stoudemire refuses the screen and pulls up right in the face of Daniel Bobic and knocks it down. That is a big time play. Refuses the screen. Crawford was out trying to put some pressure. And Lute Olson sees it go down. He's thinking right now about defense. And he really got into his team, saying, This game is not over. We've got 2.8 seconds left at Oklahoma State. And don't forget, Jay Billis, as you pointed out before, they had two fouls to give, only used one with 2.8 seconds left. They could use another to chew up what little time is left. They just have to be careful, though, Dick, when they're giving up this foul that they don't allow Oklahoma State to get into a shooting motion. That happened to Oklahoma State against Texas at Gallagher Iba. They had a foul to give and gave it, but they allowed Oklahoma, uh, they allowed Texas to get in their shooter. Or Texas did it to Oklahoma State, excuse me, allowed it to get into their shooting motion. So they understand exactly what they're going against right now. Well, you talk about the pressure of this situation, fighting to make the final late for this NCAA tournament and Saturday's uh, regional final against Illinois. All the work you do in the offseason, all the practices, all the game action, all the times that you have to fight for a victory. And now it comes down to who makes the final shot. And Stoudemire, I mean, that is about as tough a 15-footer on the dead dribble run, pulling up, floating in midair, and able to hit the go-ahead goal. Well, he's done it all season long. He's made the...